Um, hi, everybody. I'm Nisreen Chadi. I am um, currently learning lead for Africa, but I'm also a school teacher, an early childhood teacher specifically. Um, and I'm currently located in DC, so representing the DC chapter, I guess. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about Sheikh Imam, uh, the Egyptian protest singer, the icon of dissent. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. So the article that I chose um, to share with you all today is called Sheikh Imam, A Voice of the People. It's by Sophie Frankfurt. It was published in 2017 in the Ethnomusicology Review. And it's actually based on her um, field research that she conducted in Cairo in 2016. Um, so she went and spoke with a lot of um, people from his generation in terms of like the leftist uh, student movement, um, people who were really like listening to his music at the time that it was coming out. So my own interest in uh, Sheikh Imam is I, could, I was trying to think about, you know, when did I really first hear about him? Um, he's definitely not very mainstream. And I think it was really when I started attending more protests and being more like involved in activism that I would hear these songs either being played um, or people singing along to them. The recordings themselves are, are you know, quite um, poor quality. You know, they're mainly done through, um, you know, live performances, that kind of thing. And even like, it's not very melodic or, or you know, just typically what you expect of Arabic music at the time. It had a different sound and a different style and you know the lyrics were quite political so i was definitely you know something in the background but i wanted to learn more so uh in learning about him he's uh, was born in egypt in a small village uh, in 1918 he lost his sight at the age of five months and he spent most of his adult life actually uh, as a reciter of quran and also composing uh, secular songs just for commercial purposes uh, and he's, like I said before, widely known as a protest um, singer, and it was really that that sort of took shape when he met um, Ahmed Fouad Nagim, who was an Egyptian poet, um, a po and whose, you know, poetry is very political, very satirical. Uh, they met in the 60s and, you know, started a, a phenomenal collaboration. They were quite prolific in, in the number of songs that they created. Um, Sheikh Imam also went on to compose for other poets as well, um, also within the same sort of vein of like colloquial poetry that was um, providing like political and social commentary. They were, um, they angered the authorities very much. They were both imprisoned for their songs. They were banned from state media and their music actually circulated uh, in an underground way through you know, cassette tapes, um, live, you know, actual uh, performances at um, university rallies or, or these kinds of things. So that, um, that partnership continued. And what's something that's really interesting about the time that they were imprisoned, they were in prison oftentimes at the same time and um, they were in separate cells, but um, Sheikh Imam tells a story of going um, during break times, uh, the, the times that they were released from their cells, they would, um, he would go pass by um, Negum's cell. He, Negum would recite whatever poetry he had come up with, and then he would commit it to memory quickly, go to his cell and compose. So that was how a lot of the songs came to be. I'm gonna share actually um, just half of a song. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, or maybe, you know, just to, to put us in the mood, I'm just gonna make sure that my sound goes on. Okay. So this is the song that I would always hear at protests. And I, to me, it's my favorite. I haven't heard enough of the others, to be honest, but this is the, the one that's the most accessible to me. Shaytu surat al-mazara bin kabdi. 
المنهدين شيدوا سورة المزارع من كدين وعلى الإيدين والخمارة جنب المصانع والسجن بطرح الجنين والخمارة جنب المصانع والسجن بطرح الجنين والاتدابك في الشوارع Okay, so um, so that's uh, the song that I would hear often, and especially that that one line, the Ahmad um, Wafalahin wa Talaba, that was always like shouted out with uh, a lot of gusto. So that always caught my attention. Um, so you might have also noticed that the picture in that video was of the protests in Beirut or in Lebanon. And so in, you know, sin always whenever these kind of protests emerge during the Arab Spring and then the latest round, uh, you know, in 2019 across Lebanon, Iraq, you know, his his music immediately kind of comes to mind and is, is then again performed. So the musical style and lyrics um, uh, Frankfurt talks about in the article, she says, um, and you can notice it, is that it's, you know, known for its simplicity. Lyrics were always in colloquial Egyptian. Um, many songs were uh, featured political criticism of the regime lampooning specific policies and politicians. So there's a song about Nixon, Nixon Baba, like Daddy Nixon, um, kind of mocking Sadat's uh, invitation of Nixon and the region sort of like cozying up to the West. Um, Al Ful wal Lahma is a, called, is, uh, means uh, fava beans and meat, in which, um, you know, the experts are saying that the poor shall eat fava beans, it is the meat of the poor, and that they don't want anything to, you know, they shouldn't eat meat because it's actually poisonous and um, unhealthy, and so it's kind of a commentary on, on class and that the poor shall always be poor, essentially. Um, and then there's Alhamdulillah khabbatna taht batatna, um, and that's a kind of, a, I'll share the lyrics on the next slide. Um, also a, a mocking commentary on uh, the, the defeat of 1967 um, with Israel, that, that war with Israel. So on the other hand, you also, there were a lot of uh, patriotic songs such as Ya Masr Umi, Masr Yam, uh, Yamma Ya which were kind of, you know, love songs to, to the country. So and they were free of that kind of sarcasm that the other um, songs had. And we're seeing, you know, uh, Frankfurt mentions that a lot of the his fans, you know, felt that these were like the real national anthems. So it was this love of country and contempt for regime. So here is just a sampling also of this song, Alhamdulillah um, Khabbatna which kind of means like, we're like, you know, we've accomplished so much. So we've hit under our armpits <laughs> and, um, you know, we're, uh, we've done so much and we've, you know, had success, but then if you read through the lyrics, which I won't do, but you can have a look at right there, um, you know, was actually, you know, kind of these empty gestures when in fact the country suffered a humiliating defeat and in fact leaders had sent um, young men into a war that they were ill-prepared to fight and, you know, it was just a, 
a real source of, of shame and disillusionment. So uh, in this article, Frankfurt asks, uh, she kind of poses the question, was Sheikh Imam really the voice of the people, which is what you know, his fans kind of call him and, and refer to him as, when in reality, he was really only embraced by a, a one segment of society, which was leftist students and intelligentsia. So she's kind of exploring this, um, this, this paradox of you know, a voice of the people who remains unknown to the majority of Egyptians. And so that interested me. I didn't really realize that. And then actually in conversation with my mother, it was something, it was like, actually, yes, he was mainly known uh, or popular among um, sort of the, the intellectuals and the students, um, very much leftist, of course. And she says in her article, ask your average taxi driver or shop worker from that generation, and they have almost certainly not heard of Sheikh Imam. Which again, you know, it's it's interesting. She doesn't really go into detail about how she reached this claim. I think it's more of that oral um, research that she was doing, just talking with people. But and so the the explanation that she provides is is quite interesting. She says um, that really Imam was central to leftist intelligentsia's claims to be authentic representatives of the Egyptian nation amidst many competing claims. So it was that you know, not just that, um, you know, he spoke out uh, and he spoke for the common man and for the poor and workers, but, um, but that he spoke, you know, he spoke with their voice, that he was really, um, because he communicated their same agenda, that this is what the masses want. Um, and so even things like they would say, you know, that because his um, his songs were in colloquial, they were accessible, the music was was simple, you know, it, it, she's almost uh, implying that this kind of seems um, not to really fully cover, like to really answer that question, because in fact, there was a broad range of music that was even more complex that was quite comp popular with the masses. Um, so she's sort of questioning that. And it makes sense if you think about it in context, politically speaking at the time in the 70s, you now have um, after Nasser um, Anwar Sadat is president and he's moving the country in a direction that is leaving the left very much in the, you know, kind of on the margins. Um, he's, a you know, there's a gradual abandonment of state socialism. Um, he's making moves for peace with Israel. He's aligning with the West. Um, you know, with the, the Nixon song. Um, and so it's kind of a bleak period for leftist activists and intelligentsia because their vision of the world, you know, is, is kind of slipping away. And everything that Sadat is bringing is, is kind of in opposition, in direct opposition with their values. So ultimately what Frankfurt says is, is happens when using Sheikh Imam's voice is to really try to lend, um, credibility and uh, relevance to um, to a political uh, movement or, or presence that is kind of feeling itself become quite irrelevant. And so I will just leave you with this uh, quote from the article, through the left wing student slash intelligentsia's embrace of Sheikh Imam, they're claiming him, of him as our voice, but simultaneously the voice of the people, his listeners, were able to reinforce their claims to be able to speak from and to the masses, even though their audience was largely limited to the educated urban left-wing elite. And if you would like to learn more about Sheikh Imam and uh, Ahmed Fouad Negam, because it's really hard to separate the two, um, here are some resources. And that is it. I um, will leave you with that.